In the late autumn months of 2021, Mojang showcased a terrifying new update to their game, The Deep Dark. It was shown as a scarily eerie underground biome meant to be filled with dangerous mobs, spooky sounds, and valuable loot to make it worth your while. All of the blocks and features showcased were super interesting and seriously spooky, but there was one that seemed to stand out to everyone as the most chilling of them all, The Warden. A huge, intimidating mob that navigates through vibrations and smell alone. And if you stick around, I'll tell you everything you've wanted to know and more about this creepy creature. <sighs> now, on the development side of this new mini-boss, the Warden didn't always look like this. It went through multiple iterations before it ended up as this eerie enemy. The original concept was referred to as the Stalker and was a much taller, thinner mob, with a fake glowing item suspended in its stomach. This was intended to look like another, unused item that would usually be found across the deep dark on totems, and acted as a lure for unsuspecting players to walk up, only to be pounced on by a huge, shadowy creature. I sure as heck am glad that's not the approach they went for. That's somehow even scarier than the current version. After the stalker came the Hallowed, a white-themed mob that seemed to play with the idea of it being taken over by a substance called Hallow that seemed to rot and create a corrupted form. Reminiscent of what Skulk looks like these days, Mojang even said in a podcast that with this concept, they were trying to use elements of trypophobia, certain patterns of holes across the body, which makes a lot of people feel super uncomfortable. However, they eventually decided they didn't want the Warden to look gory in any way. They wanted it to feel creepy, playing more with dread than disgust. In between those iterations and the version in the game now, there were a bunch of other designs raised by Mojang, including green glowing versions, creepy long-armed versions, and even a more friendly-looking version with a wither rose on its head. I wonder what the ideas for these designs were. It seems they eventually went with the current design to make an intimidating, strong-looking monster, but apparently, the glowing core they decided to go with is important to the lore as well. There hasn't been any official word on exactly what it is, though, so what do you think? Let me know your ideas in the comments below. I think it's got something to do with all the mobs it's killed the dark material around it is a skulk-like substance that feeds off of the experience of the mobs. But what about the mob that actually made it into the game? Well, apparently, what we got was based off of the monster you can hear faintly at the end of Music Disc 11. So, for better or worse, we for sure got something truly terrifying, both by looks and its mechanics. The Warden has the highest health of any mob in the game more than twice what the Ender Dragon has, at 250 hearts. It's also the strongest mob in the game, too. On hard mode, it'll deal 20 hearts of damage to a defenseless player, enough to kill you more than twice in one hit. The only mob in the game that can deal more is the completely unused giant, which doesn't even deal twice what the Warden can. That seems super overpowered, right? Well, you'd be right. Except, Mojang never actually intended for it to be a mob you fight, it doesn't actually drop anything, and only gives as much experience as a chicken. The Warden was designed with the idea of stealth in mind, the first mob made specifically for you to test your ninja skills on. Similar to the other bosses in the game, Mojang announced that the Warden does also have a name. You'd probably expect this to be a super tough and scary sounding name that properly fits the creature's dark and threatening aura, right? Well, not quite. It turns out this big fella's name is William. A little underwhelming, some might say. The Warden is spawned when a Skulk Shrieker is activated three times within a short space of time, meaning that if you've activated it twice already, you can stay quiet for long enough and reset the counter, giving yourself a little more room for error. Another interesting mechanic that you might not have noticed is that the Skulk Shrieker will only blind you instantly when it hasn't spawned a Warden. So, conversely to what it may feel like, if everything goes black all of a sudden, you're definitely safer than you could be. The Warden itself is blind so instead navigates completely by vibrations in the ground and with its sense of smell. Mojang likely took inspiration from real-life cave-dwelling animals that often are so well adapted to living below the surface in the dark that they have no need for vision and can survive and protect themselves perfectly well with their other senses. Walking around or jumping near the warden will alert it, and activating a skulk sensor will tell it almost exactly where you're located, so it's best to sneak around silently to try and shake the warden off your tail. Many ancient cities will also come with woolen floors in places, which may be the preferred paths for you to take, as they seem to absorb the vibrations you make, helping you stay unnoticed by the warden. The more vibrations a player or mob makes, the more suspicious they become of the warden, and the more agitated it'll become. After enough disturbance, the warden roars and charges straight at the target, pathfinding to them perfectly, regardless of other vibrations made. If this target happens to be you, you're likely out of luck. 
It'll chase you for as long as you can run, and once it catches you, it can deal enough damage to knock you out in one shot, even with full netherite armor equipped. You'll also find it comforting that it doesn't always matter how close you are to the warden, as it tends to focus on the target it finds most suspicious, rather than whatever's closest to it. This means you can be just a couple blocks away from it, and just barely escape by creating vibrations with snowballs or other mobs. If you manage to escape the warden and stay quiet for 60 seconds, the warden will retreat back into the ground, allowing you to skulk around undisturbed. The warden is only one block wide, but thankfully they are three blocks tall, meaning you can burrow yourself into a 1x2 tunnel and stay totally safe. But if you don't have a tunnel to retreat to, there's also the option of pillaring straight upwards a few blocks to get out of reach of the warden's attacks. If you have a couple hours to spare, you can even use this perch to crouch down and kill him yourself, but I'd recommend just bridging away to safety instead. Okay, this was recorded before the warden got a sonic boom attack. Yeah, now you're completely screwed. This ability is ranged, ignores armor, can go through walls, but luckily, it only does a ton of damage too. The attack animation is really cool, and the warden opens its ribcage as it's attacking. My personal favorite tip for combating the warden, though, is to just carry a bucket of lava. Considering that most of the time the warden walks idly around slowly with no real destination, it's pretty easy to sneak up to it and set it alight in a flood of the fiery fluid. It'll take some time, and you've still got to be quiet while you slink away, but most of the time, it's a pretty foolproof strategy. Okay, another little break here. Yeah, look at the date of this video. It's made in the snapshot season, so the warden might have changed many times since this video was released. So read up on the warden before attempting stuff like this. The warden is technically classified as an undead mob, meaning that yes, weapons enchanted with smite do deal more damage to the big guy, and it's even immune to poison effects. However, unlike most undead mobs, it doesn't take damage from the sunlight, providing a terrifying possibility of the warden following you all the way to the surface, and even following you all the way back to your base.